Hello guys and gals and welcome to a new tutorial. In today's video we are going to be covering a binocular system that allows us to smoothly zoom in and out while we're using them. Uh, you can see there's some gaps on the side there, don't worry about that, it's just because it's not full screen. If it was to full screen then you see the gaps go away. So I'm going to show you guys how to set this all up, it's going to run nice and smooth. Uh, but before we start, for the first time ever, I've decided to start doing things properly on my Patreon. Uh, from now on, anything that we cover inside of these tutorials, I'm going to have the downloadable project files available for you over on Patreon. So go check that out if you'd rather just download them than work through this. So let's uh, switch over to a blank project here where we haven't got this set up. Right, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to set up a key for the zoom function. So we're going to go to edit project settings, then to input, and we're going to be using an axis map, which allows us to scroll between two values of one and negative one. So we're just going to add a new one here, and we're going to call this zoom key. And under our key, we're going to search for our mouse wheel axis, and we're going to leave this as a scale of one, because if we are scrolling up, we're going to want one, and if we're scrolling down, we're going to want negative. So we'll close that down. Now we are going to just uh, first make our hood. Let's make a hood. So we're going to right click, head to user interface, widget blueprint. And we're going to call this binocular underscore hood. And you're also going to need this file here. I am going to provide this for you. The link for this actual texture will be in the description. Open up the hood that we've just created. And now we're going to want an image, so let's drag an image onto our canvas here. And we will head over to our brush inside of the image. And the image here, we're going to want our binocular texture. And then we're just going to scale this up. We're just going to give it a little bit of an overlap here, just to make sure that we don't get any bleed around the edge. And then make sure that we change our screen size here to whatever screen size you're currently using. I'm on a 27 inch monitor. So there we are. And that will scale that up properly for us. Now we're going to press compile and we're just going to close that down. Now we're going to open up our character blueprint. And the first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to create our widget. Uh, so we're going to do that on begin play, but we're going to do it before this branch. Uh, this is stuff that you clean up um, on a regular project, but we're not going to bother here. This is just for if we're using VR, but we're not. So we're going to put this before the branch. And what we're going to do is we're going to say create widget. And this widget here is going to be our binocular hood. And we will get player controller here because we need to know who owns this. And it's going to be our actual player, so it will belong to the player. And the return value we will promote to a variable. There we are, so that our widget is immediately a variable, and we will call this hood ref. And now we'll press compile, and that's going to create our lovely widget for us right at the beginning. But we could do this a slightly different way. What we'll do is we will say custom event, just so we can see all of this happening at the same time. We'll say create hood. And then what we will do is we will instead take this logic and we'll have it here under create hood and on our begin play we will replace this with our create hood custom event like so. So it just saves us a little bit of space to make sure that we can keep all of the binocular logic together in its own area. Okay so now what we'll do is drag off from our hood reference and we're going to add to viewport but we are also going to set the visibility to hidden. Now we'll, we'll leave it as visible for now so that when we press play, we should just immediately get our binocular showing. There we go. Uh, let's just make sure that these are working in full screen. And these are a little bit more over to the edge. It's got a little bit of bleed there. So we'll open this up, make sure that we anchor this towards the center. There we are. Now if we press play, there we go. Right, so what we're going to do here is we're going to open our character blueprint back up and now we'll set this to hidden. Compile, press play and it shouldn't show and that's what we want. 
because we don't want our, our player to see the binoculars at the very beginning of the game. But they're now there and they're available. So what we're going to do instead is we are going to create a key press. I'm going to use Q because it's my go-to for testing Q or E I normally use because it's right next to the WASD. Uh, use any key that you want here, but this is what we're going to use to bring our binoculars open. So what we'll say here is we'll get our HUD reference image. And from this, we will set visibility to visible. But you'll notice that we don't have a way to make it invisible again. So we're going to use a lovely little thing called a flip-flop, which allows us to press Q once to do A and a second time to do B. And rather than set visible this time, we're going to set to hidden when we press Q for a second time. So if we now press play, we press Q, we can turn it on and off. So that's working lovely jubbly. But now we actually need to change the way that our view looks. Okay, so the thing that we need to do here is we need to mess around with the camera. So underneath components, we have our first person camera, drag this out. And then what we need to change is the field of view. So we want to set field of view. Now the default value for field of view is 90. So if we want, say the same as uh, in like games like PUBG, you've got the 4x scopes. Uh, if you want to set the field of view, you're going to set this to 90 divided by 4. So what we're going to do is we're just going to get a divide and we're going to get, where's float? There is float by float. Uh, we know that our default value for field of view is 90 and we know we want it to be a 4x. So we put in 4. We'll plug this in. Compile. Press play. And we press Q. You see we get a zoom, but we don't zoom out again. So what we're going to do is open up our first person character. And here we're just going to set our field of view for the camera back to 90. And that should default us back to normal. So press play, Q, there we are. So it's defaulting our camera back to the normal field of view. Now, the thing that this isn't allowing us to do is it's not allowing us to zoom our camera. And this is just going to turn it on and off. So we're going to set that up slightly differently. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to give ourselves a variable and we're going to call this our zoom amount. And this is going to determine how much we're zooming by. We're going to change this to a float and by default, we're going to want this to be four because we always want to start at four. Which is our four X that we're using here in the field of view. Uh, so what we're going to do instead of setting field of view uh, here, we're just going to set this and then we're also going to set our zoom amount back to the default because we're going to be changing this value in a second. So how are we going to change this? We're going to use our zoom key that we made earlier, see here, input axis zoom key. And then what we're going to do is we're going to have to add the access value to our current zoom amount. So we're going to get the zoom amount and we're going to add, rather, there it is. Uh, so we're going to add the axis value to zoom amount. So obviously if we scroll up, we're going to add one to zoom amount. If we scroll down, we're going to minus one from zoom amount. So it's going to change how far in we're going to zoom each time. Now then, we don't want to do this all the time. We don't always want to be able to, to zoom. Uh, we're only going to want to zoom if we have the binoculars open. So we're going to create a branch. The condition we're going to promote to a variable. And we're going to call this binocular open. And now what we want to do is we're just going to set binocular open here. So once we set, make it visible, the binoculars are open. And once it's no longer visible, the binoculars are closed, right? So now we can only do our zoom if the binoculars are open. So what we want to do then is we want to set our zoom amount to axis value plus zoom amount previously. And then what we're going to do is we're going to set up the smooth zoom. So right now, this isn't going to change all the time because we're just setting our field of view here. 
So what we want to do is we want to actually make this smooth. So we're going to right click, custom event, smooth zoom. All right. And what we need to do here is we just simply need to set the field of view for our camera. So let's get a new camera reference, set field of view. There we are. And what we want to do is we want to set our field of view uh, to, here we go, this is what we're going to do. We're going to get our zoom amount, right? But we need, we don't just want to set it to zoom amount. Uh, because if we just do this, it's just going to be blinky, right? So, well, it's not even going to work yet because we haven't set up the actual um, smooth zoom. So here we want to do smooth zoom. Call the zoom. Uh, call the smooth zoom right there. It will then do the. There you go. You can see here, it's not working as intended. We're starting really zoomed in. We can zoom in and out. It's currently reversed. Uh, but it's not doing what we want this to do here. And if we scroll back far enough, we can actually go behind our character, which we don't want for obvious reasons. Uh, so we're going to change the way that this is working. Oh, but first, this is why we can go behind our character, because we currently are allowing zoom amount to go to whatever value we want. It goes ev everywhere. It can go as high as it want. It can go as low as it want. We want this value to be clamped. So a clamp is going to make sure that we cannot go above or below a certain value. Now, I'm going to set the minimum to two. So if we're using the binoculars, we are always at least going to be in a 2x. And I'm going to set the maximum to 20. And that's going to limit how far that we can actually zoom. Now then, what do we do for our smooth zoom? Well, we don't want zoom amount to be set directly like this. We want to change this a little bit. What we're going to do is we're going to use an F interp2. And this is going to allow us to interpolate between two floats, right? So what we want is we need our zoom amount, but we need our field of view default value. So if we say divide float by float, our default zoom, uh, our default field of view is 90. So we always want to be dividing 90 by our zoom amount. And then we are going to plug this into target because this is what we want to be zooming into. Okay. Now for our actual current, we're just going to pull out from our first person camera and we're going to get the field of view. So we get the current field of view value, plug that into current. Now for delta time, we're going to need to get world delta seconds. There he is. Plug this into delta time. And then our interp speed is how quick we're going to want this to happen. The introduction, we were using an interp speed of five. And we're going to plug this into field of view. Now, if we press play, we press Q. You can see we can zoom in and we can zoom out. But we're also starting already zoomed in. And this is because we still have this guy set here. We don't want this guy to be here. Uh, in fact, we do want it to, to be there. Why are we, uh, let's see. Confusing my brain. Yeah, we're, we're uh, already zoomed in straight away. So where are we at? Here we go. One of you is going to have spotted where I've made the mistake. Let's see. Ah, is this where we've made the mistake? All right, so our default value for binoculars open was set to true because we've promoted the variable here. If we press play, there we go. Now we're not starting zoomed in. We have one tiny little oversight can really mess with things. And there we go. We've got this really, really nice zoom. Nice and quick, scroll wheel up to zoom it in, scroll wheel down, zoom it out. And it's always going to have the same speed, no matter how much you're zooming in and zooming out. It's quite snappy now. One value is one tick of your mouse wheel. So you can see one, two, three, 
or and you can do that up to 20 times because we've got set max of 20. Obviously, if you want to zoom in a little bit further, then go ahead, throw up your max in the clamp, and then you'll be able to just keep zooming and zooming. That's 40. Obviously, it's diminishing returns. So the higher the number, the less the amount of zoom is going to appear because your number is slowly approaching zero. But there you go, guys. That's how you can set up a nice, smooth, variable zoom on some binoculars. Uh, as I say, you can download the project directly via my Patreon. Uh, come and check out our Discord server as well. We've got quite a lot of people in there, and they're always helping each other out. Uh, the link for that is going to be in the description. As well as a link to the texture that you're going to need, the binocular underscore T that we've used. Obviously, if you've got your own, go ahead and use that. This is literally it's just Photoshop with two circles cut out so that it's transparent on a PNG. Uh, but there we go. Uh, guys, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.